Google G's Jakarta Priege. Spread the love, humans. In this episode, I'll show you in real time, with a timer, how I prepare my rig for departure in under 10 minutes. This does not include giving the campsite a once-over for anything left behind, or packing up any chairs, tables, or kitchen items. It's just the camper. First off, I unplug and stow away the electrical connection. This video, by the way, was filmed after my visit to Yosemite. The Yosemite episode will be next week. Then I retract the two folding stabilizer jacks in the back of the camper. There is a spare tire underneath the back of the camper, and there is also a receptacle for another hitch in the back. By the way, this campsite was at Lake McSwain Camping and Recreation Area which is about an hour and 15 minutes from Yosemite in Northern California. Next, I remove and pack away the wheel chalk. Sometimes Gugudians or humans ask me if I have a kitchen. There is no kitchen attached to the camper. I could build a false wall for the back. There's eight feet of length, but I prefer to use a foldable table, a cooler and a gas stove. And you can see the optional propane tank that I added. I stow all my kitchen items in the back of the Jeep. This video was filmed toward the end of my trip to Northern California. And soon, in this timeline, I'll be heading back to Los Angeles, which has been my home base for a little bit while I've been doggy sitting for a sweet dog named Jax. Next, I'll remove the wheel chalk lock made by Trimax. I quite like this wheel lock, which goes for about $62 on Amazon. Of course, a thief could break any of these locks if they wanted to, but it's just an extra deterrent. Thankfully, I had no problems on the road. All the humans I've encountered have been wonderful. In case you're curious, other optional items I've added to this camper, a front cargo rack, a roof rack, a coax connector for cable TV, which I've never used as yet, and the aforementioned rear door and 11 pound propane tank and mount. This hitch lock is from Proven Industries. In case you're wondering, the hitch lock cost about $245, and I've been very happy with it. I used to have to lie on the ground to get the key into this lock, but now I can feel for it, more or less. How's your day going today anyway? Is it weird that I didn't speed up the video at certain points? It might be. While driving, I keep the camper pretty light. I put a few chairs and small tables inside the camper. The queen mattress is in there, of course. I have a 10 by 10 pop-up awning that I keep on the front rack. I have three plastic bins where I keep some dry food and toiletries. And I store most of my other items in the Jeep, clothes, kitchen items, etc. The lock comes in three sections, as you can see. I'm a little thinner now than in this video, which was taken in mid-March. I've been working on losing weight. As of today, in June, I've lost 27 pounds since December. I had planned to lose more than that by this time. I wanted to lose eight pounds a month, but it's going more slowly than my original plan. The desire to eat is strong in this one. Of course, now it's time to connect the trailer hitch and the two inch trailer hitch ball. I'll provide a link to a map of Lake McSwain below, and you'll see that it's close to Yosemite. It's also close to Columbia from the last episode. Time to raise the trailer up just a bit. And as you'll see, at 785 pounds when empty, this trailer can be moved by one person. Lightweight for the camper was important to me because my Jeep does not have a powerful engine. There's a gorgeous camper called The Moth by Taxa Outdoors, but it weighs just over 1,300 pounds empty, and it's also much pricier. I'll let you know because I know you're curious. This camper, all in, costs 7,085 human American dollars.
That's with those previously mentioned extras that I got. Fitting the coupler on the ball is a bit tricky. For my rig, I find it needs to catch the ball rather on the edge. Silly me, I missed the first time. There are other extras one could add to the camper. You could get a rear window instead of a rear door. You could get extra shelves for the front or the rear. You could get a rhino rack X-tray, a large roof basket for $470. You could get a rhino rack bat wing awning for $887. You could get a seven gallon road shower for $558. Several of these items require a roof rack already, which I have. Go to the Runaway Camper's website to see all the items you could add. Whew! Finally got it attached. Now we're about halfway through the departure routine. Time to remove the wheel from the front jack of the camper. It took me several months to get this routine down. My friend Gordon, from episodes 12 through 14, helped this non-camper establish a routine. I didn't buy a lot of expensive products to camp, but I got a decent cooler. The Igloo BMX 25, that's 25 quarts. It holds the cold pretty well, and it's about $76. I sat in a lot of camper chairs, and I didn't want something with metal bars digging into my thighs underneath. Plug in the blinkers with the standard four-prong trailer light connection and attach the safety chains. Back to the camper chair for a moment. I ended up getting the Ozark Trail oversized director's chair. I liked that it was extra wide and I didn't feel any metal crossbars pressing my thighs from underneath. I got the chair at Walmart for about $50, but alas, a seam seems to have burst recently and it might be the end of the chair unless I can figure out how to fix it. Maybe it had to support too much weight. This little latch here has a hole for a pin, but you could also put a lock through the hole. Time to close and lock the camper doors. The Range Runner comes standard with two side doors, and I opted to get the 40 by 40 inch rear door. It would be convenient if one key worked on all doors, but there are two different keys, one for the side doors and one for the rear door. There are two keyholes, one for the door bolt and one for the door handle. If you stick the wrong key in, it can get stuck and you may end up having to replace the lock. I always double check to make sure I close off the 110 flush mounted plug. The 6 foot by 8 foot version of this camper has two power strips inside. Now it's time to check the brake lights. Since I'm usually alone, I use a weight on the brake pedal. Talking about the coaxial connection for a moment, I suppose one reason I've never looked into cable at any of the campsites I've stayed at is that streaming services seem to work well via Wi-Fi. Side note, of course I have a universal streaming connection from my spaceship, but that would be cheating. Left blinker. Admittedly, this part can get a bit tedious. But, it's important to be safe out there, right? Right blinker. Besides all the hiking I've been doing lately, as you can see, setting up and breaking down the camp is also quite a bit of exercise. What are you doing to take care of your human body out there? Let me know by making a comment below. And finally, the hazard lights. One pro tip about this camping area at Lake McSwain, you might need to wear your flip-flops in the showers. They aren't exactly pristine, but it's a shower.
There we go, all backlights working. And that is how you prepare the range runner for departure in under 10 minutes. Obviously, in a normal situation, if I wasn't timing this, I'd take more time to look around and make sure I didn't leave any trash, make sure I didn't leave any items of value around the campsite, and just in general, do a careful check all around the campsite before taking off. Thanks for tuning in today. Tune in next week for the episode on the gorgeous Yosemite National Park. By the way, very quickly, if you like the show, consider Buy Me A Coffee to help support the show. Buy Me A Coffee is a great way for creators and artists to accept one-time support or membership ongoing from their fans for the price of a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash brainfire to help the show. Thank you. Coffee and some bagels And get out of here To where the world